What's good, everyone? This is your boy, DJ's Raw Uncut Truth, giving you that raw content that you deservedly need. And before I start, I want to thank all the subs for always supporting my channel. Now, I may not have 100,000 or a million followers, but the people who follow me truly get what basketball, what sports in general is all about. And I want, and I want to thank all of you. So today, I want to talk about Lamella Ball, uh, what they have wrong about him. And when I say they, I'm, I'm talking about the media or people with an opinion about Lamella. What they have wrong is he never earned it. That is a lie. For almost his whole teenage years. Lamelo Ball has sacrificed a lot. A lot. Starting from when Jello stole in China. When he did that, instead of Lamelo going to a prep school or or a different school, because remember before Jello stole in China. Um, LeVar said that LaMelo was not going to play for Chino Hills. He actually took him out of Chino Hills. And the word at the time was they were looking for a school. This is way before that China incident happened. And you fast forward to the China incident and then January when the family decided to go to Lithuania. Now, I'm going to repeat this right now because a lot of people have their own agenda. LaMelo going to Lithuania wasn't a bad idea. It was the team. Because if LaMelo went to Zagreus, nobody would complain. When the Ball family had their offers from European teams, they made it a priority to have it a package deal. They want to help Jello out to have him get looks so he could get drafted. The problem was, Zalgris and many other elite teams only wanted LaMelo because he was younger and he had a lot of potential. Now, Jello has improved from the workouts I've seen this year, but at that time, Jello was not. You know, he, he was a good player, but he wasn't on that level at that time. I'm not talking about the high school scoring points. We get all that. We understand the Chino Hill system. We get that. But at the time, most elite European teams, they don't settle on a player at Jello's age unless you have that potential like that. And LaMelo had the potential, even though it was raw. Um, but I still stand to this day saying if LaMelo would have went to Zagreus instead of Vitotis at the time, his skill level would have been even more advanced than what it is right now. And I think he's going to do well once he hits the NBA. Uh, Vitotis was very toxic, a uh, bunch of haters, a uh, coach who didn't want to believe in a young talent, just a bad mix. And that's why uh, the Ball family left early. All through those trials and tribulations, it turned LaMelo into a killer on the court. He's fearless on the court. He doesn't shrink from the opportunity. And he always go at it a thousand percent swinging. He doesn't go down without a fight. And that's one thing I respect about LaMelo. He loves this game of basketball. You can see it on the court. From his flair to his charisma, he appreciates this game. And I'll tell you one thing, 
I'd be surprised if LaMelo's in the NBA and he has a game lower than 10 points. So that's the type of player he is. He's he's going to get his. Trust and believe that. Another false narrative about LaMelo is that Jello saved LaMelo's career in the JBA. That is a lie. If you looked at the LA Ballers roster before they made their roster moves, not just Jello, but the big man they got, their roster wasn't all that. Besides LaMelo, they had one 6'9 guy that was a finesse guy, Greg Floyd, who was good. But besides that, they just had other pieces that were not gritty, that did not hold their own. But still, they made that move, meaning the LA Ballers, they made a move not only to help Melo out, it's because they were in trouble of losing the whole JBA. The Seattle Ballers at the time were the team to beat. They were on fire. They had an excellent guard play. And the LA Ballers, before they made those moves, could not stop the Seattle Ballers. So they were desperate and called up Jello and then made some trades for some big men. And that's how they won it all. Do I think it was right? I wish that didn't happen. I wish they, I wish LaMelo would have toughened it out. But it is what it is. So all those situations from the Totus, JBA, and even the JBA USA tour when LaMelo took his game another level, made him into the player he is now. And then you take it a step further playing with Spire, which was a god sended move. He was able to connect with Coach Jermaine Jackson. And Jermaine Jackson has become a mentor to him. Someone who has been in the NBA, who knows the ins and out of this game. And it rectified most of LaMelo's problems on the court. That's what he needed. And now we're here to this day and age. Pre-draft. And now I'm hearing that some teams may be, you know, skeptical, LeVar this and that. Here's a lie. The lie is LeVar Ball is a distraction. That is a lie. Right now, this is LeVar's quietest year ever. He's chilled out. He's so focused on uh, Big Baller brand right now that he ain't got time to be going around these media appearances talking to these uh, shines. He's about making money. He has a rolling class mentality, unlike you fools who criticize him every day. But that's another topic for another day. LaMelo is what I call the stimulus package. He will help you from revenue, star appeal, affectious playmaking ability, which you need in today's NBA. And I guarantee you, most of the teams that will draft him, he will start. The only team I cannot see him starting on is the Warriors. That's about it. But every other team, he will start. And he will play his game. And as for his shot. Yeah, I wish it was a better form. But his shot percentage does not tell the truth. Do you know that LaMelo shoots almost 40% when it's a standard shot? When he's not rushing his shot selection, when he's taking time on his motion, he makes almost 40%. That's why he had a super high three-point rating at the end of the NBL season because he figured it out. He shot so bad at the beginning of the season, his coaches and shooting coaches telling him, 
hey, you don't have to rush that shot. If they're leaving you open, take your time and hit that shot. And that's what he did. So if the scouts watched the end of the NBL season, which I think they should, and I think they did. They were the, some GMs of their Mitch Kupchak from uh, the Charlotte Hornets was at the NBL games. So he saw the end of the, that season. And speaking of Mitch Kupchak, if let's say the Charlotte Hornets draft the middle ball, that would be a good fit. They have shooters. Devontae Graham shoots 43%. Three. And they have some versatile wings. They just don't have a playmaker. And I had various conversations with other YouTubers telling me, oh, that's not a good fit. Or um, how is he going to start over Terry Rozier? Here's the thing. Terry Rozier underperformed. And... If they draft the Lamella Ball, he most likely would become a a six man. Let's face the facts: the Charlotte Hornets have two combo guards. They don't have a true point guard. They don't have a facilitator. And if Lamelo's drafted by them, he'll be their only facilitator, which means he'll start. See, it's that simple. It's not. It's not too difficult to know basketball. But we dumb ourselves down to create a false narrative. And that's the problem with the media and a beef between the media and the ball family. They want the ball family to fail so bad that they keep making up stuff to fit their agenda instead of pointing out what's really real. Is this draft um, like the 2003 draft? Hell no. Is it like the 2011 draft with Kyrie and any other good draft? No. But is it a draft with a lot of good depth? Yes. To be honest, this draft has more depth than the 2019 draft. The 2019 draft is top heavy. If you take away Zion, uh, John Morant, Tyler Hero, Brandon Clark. What you get? A a few nobodies and a a couple of players that had to go to the G League. That was not a great class. And you got some rookies that underperformed. Like like Nikhil Alexander-Walker. When the Pelicans could have had Bo Bo and they could have had Cam Reddish. But we're gonna make that video another day, guys. Just just hold on. Just hold on. But I'm gonna end this by saying there are truths and then are, then there are lies. Stand for truth. Stop dissing these young brothers who are trying to see their game and become stars I see why a lot of prospects don't even like talking to the media why? because they're just so disingenuous they think they know about basketball but they get their talking points from Skip Bayless and Bubba Gump, Shannon Sharp and Stephen A. Smith these people do not know basketball and with Lamelo gets drafted and does his thing they'll be quieter than a mouse that's all I'm going to say all praise to the most high peace